First of all, I'd like to thank you for spending time here. Those of you here at the live webinar and those of you watching the recording, obviously many of you are watching the recording. Uh, my name is Walter Peters and I wrote the book called Naked Forex and I like to trade simple patterns off of support and resistance. Essentially, that's what it comes down to. So where the market remembers um, where it found support in the past, it becomes resistance and so forth and vice versa. And this is a very good example of this right here on the CAD yen. Uh, this is a trade that I just took moments ago, about five minutes ago, actually. Um, and it's essentially this, this red line here is where the support I anticipate to be given, particularly given this strong bounce yesterday, and now it's traded higher than yesterday's high, and so I'm in the trade. I also waited for the Asian session to mess around before I put it in. I like to get in during Europe or New York. So I don't like to get in during the eight, what we call the Asian drift, which is when the market goes against the natural direction of the day in most cases. Not not 100% foolproof, but in most cases. So, uh, hey, hello, Pat Cat. So what um, we're gonna talk about today is naked trading with an added element. Now, for those of you that follow me, um, my background is in psychology. So I have a PhD in, in experimental psychology and I studied in particular, um, th you know, thinking about your thinking. And we taught little kids to think about their thinking. And so, as you know, as a trader, you think a lot about your thinking. You think, why did I do that? <laughs> or, or why don't I do this? And things like that. You, you become very introspective and many traders are in fact introverts to begin with and we're drawn to trading because it's a it's a natural extension of um, what we're comfortable with you know working with a computer on our own rather than a, a group of noisy people but um uh but what what i want to do here is share with you what i believe to be a an extremely valuable framework for dealing with trends and the reason why i found it to be so valuable uh, many of you probably are not inside the Naked Forex Now Private Forum where we've been talking a lot about this, but that's okay because you're going to get this information here today. What we do is we use the sentiment or the rather the open positions of the retail Forex traders to dictate our decisions during a trend. Now, let me state that another way. If you've ever been trend trading, you know that it's quite fun when the trend is engaged, and it can be a little bit stressful when the trend is retracing, there's a retracement against the trend, and it can be very frustrating at the end of the trend when it completely collapses, and there's either a strong move against the trend or just move sideways for some time, and keeps popping you out of your added positions that you you know that you get into at the at the end of the trend. So. The reason why I found this framework to be so useful is because it gives you a uh, basically um, a yay or nay. So when you see that the market is trending, you have to decide, am I going to continue to take trades in the direction of the trend or should I be looking for the end of the trend here? Okay, does that make sense? Did I explain that well enough? Because what I'm trying to do is, is, is marry the two. There's two important concepts here. One is, is the market trending? And the second one is, is the trend over? And this is a very difficult question to answer from a technical point of view. But what we found is that by using very easily accessible data, you can make some pretty, pretty uh, uh, on-point decisions. It, nothing's foolproof, but you can get a pretty good idea of whether or not that trend still has some some fuel, so to speak, or whether it's going to probably fizzle out. So does this sound like something that you guys would be interested in? Does this sound good? Would you be interested in, in, in diving into this today? Let me know in the chat box. And at the end of today's session, we'll certainly go over the live charts. If you want to look at them from a naked point of view, I'm happy to do so. But first, okay, sounds good? Excellent. Cool. So this is what we're going to do. We are going, um, first we're going to talk about the trends and sentiment. So first of all, 
what we need is a market that's going in. I'd wanted to show you the CAD yen simply because I'm going to trade here. I'm looking to take profit at 93, 94, 20. I bought, so my blue number is my, my entry price. My red number is my stop. So I've got 105 pips of risk here on the daily CAD yen. And then I'm targeting 93, 94, 20. And then I'll put a trailing exit on one too. So you got three three potential targets here, 93, 94, 20, and then the, um, the trailer. Okay. All right. So let's move to perhaps the, it's unfortunate because, you know, it's really too bad because a couple of weeks ago, we had some really strong trends actually about a month ago. Uh, we had some some great examples of this style of trading. And right now, it's a little bit tricky. Let me share with you what I use. These are sort of the tools that I use. I'm going to bring them, these over for you. You should see these in a moment. Um, can you see my, uh, my screen here? So you shouldn't see the charts anymore. Yeah, cool. All right. So what you're looking at here is the um, the Awanda open position ratios. There, there's um, several places where you can get these data. And the easiest way to get to the Awanda one, which is the one I like, is to go to fxjake.com forward slash crowd. If you go to fxjake.com forward slash crowd, it'll just pop you right onto this page. Cool, you see Awanda, great. All right, so th these are the numbers we're paying attention to here. Now, the first part of this is to find a chart that is trending. You wanna find a strong trending chart. And then after that, you go to these numbers to see if it's completely out of whack. Now, what do I mean by out of whack? What I'm looking for is I'm looking for 70% of the traders or more to be in, in, uh, in one direction. So in the case of, and now for gold and silver, I'm actually looking for 80% because there are far fewer traders that trade gold and silver and they have a long bias. You know, gold and silver are kind of like stocks or indices where, you know, most traders are actually going long. Um, it isn't often the case that that traders are shorting, so you know it's not really it's not really the same. But um, I, I, because they they are more likely to get you know seventy percent bullish uh, positions, I, I have that eighty percent barrier for for gold and silver. You can see gold right now is about fifty fifty, and silver is very bullish. It's at seventy eight to 21 or 78 and a half to 22, 21 and a half. So basically it's close. Silver's close as is, um, to the 80% mark. And the Euro Aussie is really close to the 70% mark. In fact, it, it was just on it the other day. So these numbers, I believe are updated every 20 minutes, which is nice. You can also find these data at places like, um, not F um, daily effects. So you can see here at daily effects, um, you can see how 84% of the traders are short S&P 500. That's a pretty good sign that um, that you want to go long. <laughs> and most traders we know lose. So what we want, and they even put that here. That's a bullish sign, right? Um, here you can see that 65% of the traders are shorting the pound. So that's a signal bullish. Again, these are going to be IG market data because IG market owns daily effects. Uh, but but I don't like to trade the 65.35. I only like to rely on these numbers when they're 70.30. So this is another one. See how it says gold here? Um, they're reporting that 71% of the traders are long gold. Um, I, I would, again, I want to see gold or silver touch the 80% mark. So there's a higher barrier for that. Um, so there you have it. Now there's another place that I know you can go to get this, and this would be at the Saxo. Um, and you can see Saxo here is showing 53% of the traders are shorting the Euro. 61% of them are going long. 
you know, it's pretty well even across the board here. Euro yen um, is one. Ah, here you go. Euro pound. Great. So euro pound, euro yen and euro pound are two. Okay, let's look at these. Let's look at euro yen and euro pound, shall we? Let's do that. All right. So let me show you how this might work. So here's my euro. Here's my euro pound right here. It's clearly in a downtrend. And what we know from the data is we know that most traders are shorting it and very few are going long. Oh, isn't that interesting? So uh, this is um, this is actually fascinating. Normally, in most cases, you would this is not what you see. In most cases, what you see here um, is wow. Okay, this is not a textbook. <laughs> this is not a textbook. Um, let's go to the euro yen. We'll come back to the euro pound. I, I do want to talk about the euro pound, but let's talk about the euro yen first. This was that's not ideal really because it doesn't really illustrate what I'm talking about. It's almost the opposite, but that's okay. So here we have the euro yen. The euro yen went up. It flatlined. It went up. It flatlined for some time in this box, consolidated, and then broke out again. I believe that the euro yen is going to go higher again, and I think that you can see that the market made a little bit of a bounce off of these highs over here, right? These highs, which were resistance and resistance became support. I think it's gonna go up and I think it's it's a no brainer that's probably gonna at least go up to 134.20. Uh, and it's right now at 132.55. Uh, so uh, 100 and you know, whatever, 70 pips or something like that. I think definitely, is possible for the euro yen. So now why do I say that? The reason why I say that is because a large chunk of the retail, no, this is important, retail traders are going short. They're selling euro pound. So, uh, sorry, euro pound, euro yen. They're sh shorting euro yen. So it's it's gone over that 70% um, mark. Remember, we go back to Saxo, you see here on the euro yen, 69.82% of the traders are selling euro yen. That means you will be in the 30% group if you go long. You always want to be in the minority. Let me state that another way. Most retail traders lose. When a lot of retail traders get a bright idea, there's a pretty good sign that that's not such a good idea. <laughs> That's just another way of saying that. We don't want to be in the herd of losers, right? So what I would so so that's the first step. First step is find a trading market. This market's been going up. Now, granted, it hasn't been going up consistently like we had uh, you know, a couple months ago, where we had like, you know, boom. Actually, the euro is a really good example because the euro was like this for months and months, where it was just going up and then up, and every time it did this, there, all these people were shorting it here. And I said, no, I think it's gonna go higher, and it did, and it kept going higher and higher. Everyone kept shorting it here and here and here, and it kept going higher and higher. And even when it made this bullish flag, where these wicks were made, the large, vast majority of traders were shorting it. And you can go back in, in the Oanda data and look at that, and I'll show you how you can see that. So you can compare the percentage of traders that are long or short versus price which is really puts my theory to the test because you could be sitting there thinking, uh, I don't know about this Walter character. He could be blown a lot of hot air. And I encourage you always to test whatever someone tells you and make sure it's your reality. Uh, and this is no different, no doubt. A lot of people will argue with me and say, well, how can that be that the market's going to go up if everyone's selling it? It has to go down. No, remember, we're talking about retail traders here. So it doesn't really matter why retail traders are wrong. We just know they're wrong. Um, so f another example is if I take my underwear off and I put it on top of the roof on a flagpole, it doesn't really matter why my underwear is going to be flapping around in, in the wind and telling me which way the wind's blowing. 
It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter why that's the case, but it is the case and it will show me which way the wind's going. And so that's what we're doing here is we're using the barometer of retail traders to determine what, you know, what should we do here with this trend? So let's go back to the euro yen. So I think given what we saw in Saxo, now I will admit that we don't have quite the same numbers on uh, Awanda. You can see on Awanda, the euro yen is at 65, so it's not at the 69.70 level, but it's close. Um, and, and they're not always going to match up. And my advice is just find one that you like and stick to it. Um, so, you know, this is a little bit higher. It's still saying, and it might not be refreshed as often. Reset one hour. Yeah, I don't know how often this, these data change. Um, but, but here you go. You know, this is right on the 70% mark. I would expect the euro yen to go up. Now, if you think about it, uh, what are the traders thinking when they see this chart? Well, the bears are thinking, oh yeah, it's completely collapsed. This move has gone too far, too strong, it's falling. So they're selling here. And you can actually see where, where, their, um, where their orders are. And Awanda will give you tools on that. Uh, in fact, let's, let's do that. Um, we can go to Awanda. Um, Wanda orders. Uh, here you go, the order book. So this will show you where. Um, let's see. Do I have my euro yen here? Yes. Actually, do I have CAD yen here? No, they just give you the big ones. Okay, so. Um, this is, okay, so here's how to read this. This is Euro Yen, right? So these guys here have um, uh, sell positions that they took up here, right? Okay, <clears throat> and there's some more sell positions if it goes a little bit lower, and there's some buy positions if it goes a little bit lower too. You can see there's a whole bunch of buy orders between 132.57 where it is right now and 130 really there's a huge clump right there right um so if it goes a little bit lower there's a lot of buying that's going to come in now what what might those orders be well they could be buy orders for the bulls so the bulls have put some limit orders in there and they're saying well if it gets a little bit lower i'm going long baby right um but it also could be take profits for the bears because they're already in a little bit of profit and they want to, and they want to get out of their position. What about, um, so those, those are the orders, right? What about over here? We can see a whole bunch of traders have gone long up here. These are like the trend traders, the breakout traders, the ones that see a higher high and they think, okay, it's going to keep going. Well, it's pulled back a bit. You can see a lot of the bears have shorted on the way down here, right? And look at this. Now, this is the amazing part of this. And this is, this is what I find fascinating, that there are so many um, open, uh, uh, short positions um, that, have, that are basically right here, okay? Right about where we are, just, just, just a little bit lower than where we are right here. So they shorted up here, right uh, up here and then these guys went long up here so they're in a drawdown and then down here you can see that their buy orders are really close to where they shorted because it has i mean it, they couldn't have shorted up above 134 40 or whatever the high was because the market hasn't been there in so long it's it, you know it was a long long time ago so there, that's why you don't see any orders up here right you do see um uh, you don't see any because they couldn't have taken a trade. The price didn't touch there yet. You do see some orders up here for the guys that are, you know, trend followers or whatever, and they were just waiting for the market to get there. But so this is what it's telling us. If the market goes just down a, just a little bit, just a little bit lower, um, there's a whole bunch of buying that's going to come in. So what that tells me is that there's support on the horizon and that we're going to see the market really bounce. If it hasn't already, if it gets a little bit lower, it's going to bounce. 
and it's going to come right back up. So I don't really expect the market to go much lower. If it does go lower, I expect to see a wick, a wicky candle, and a sharp bounce up. And again, that's because these dudes are wrong. They're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. <laughs> and they're always wrong. And even when they're right, they take profit so quickly, they don't take advantage of when they're right. And you know, we know this from the data. We look you can look at studies. There was a really good study that was printed on Daily FX about this. We looked at millions of trades. And in fact, most retail traders win more than they lose, but they lose so big that their winners are so small, it doesn't really matter. And so we're just we're just using this as like a wind sock to tell us which way is the wind blowing. Let's see if we can refresh this. If, I wonder if the numbers have changed. No. Same. Okay, they haven't refreshed it yet. Okay. Um, so does this make sense? What we're looking for, so let's just recap here for you. Okay. Number one, we're looking for a strong trend. Okay. And then we're look. and then what I like to see is the, on the pullback. So let me write this up here for you. So it's very clear for everyone. Number one, identify a trend. Do you know how to use a, a consultant to find out if there's a trend? What you do is you pluck a kid between the ages of five and eight, you sweeten the deal with a bribe, like a biscuit or a chocolate, and you and you throw it on the line chart. You throw it on the line chart and you, and you say to the kid, has this line been going mostly up or been going mostly down or mostly up and down? And the kid will tell you if it's going mostly up or going mostly down or mostly up and down, you know, equally up and down. And then um, if they say mostly up, you're in an uptrend. If they say mostly down, you're in a downtrend. If they say it's going up and down, then you're in a sideways market. Uh, and so once you've identified the trend, then what we do is we wait for the pullback. So this is number two. Number two is wait for the pullback. Pullback or retracement, whatever you want to call it. And then we get confirmation. There's there's two things that I'm looking for here. Here, let me move this over here for you. There's two things I'm looking for here after the pullback. One is I'm looking for 70% um, plus um, going against trend. Okay, I want 70% plus going against the trend. Okay. And once I see 70% of the traders thinking that the trend's over, I know the trend's going to continue. And then the last thing I'm looking for is a candle sign. Now, I actually don't like this candle, a candle confirmation. So the, basically a naked trade that tells me, yep, it's going to go. I actually don't like this candle. Okay, so let me zoom in here. Some people will look at this candle right here and they'll they'll get really excited and they'll say, woohoo, we've got a, a, a bullish um, kangaroo tail, you know? To me, this is not good enough. It's gotta have a longer tail down here, clear out a lot of orders down here. It's too small, especially compared to the previous candle. So I don't like this candle. I still think there's a potential that we can see the market stab lower before it bounces and goes higher. Uh, and that's fine. There's a lot of orders down there that that are gonna, you know, a lot of the a lot of the bears are gonna be out down here. If it gets down there, they're they're out and their fuel has been burned up. Um, so I, I think there's still a possibility that we're gonna see, and maybe that happens today or tomorrow, or maybe it happens during New York today. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe it just goes up today. But I think um, that this is not a good formation. Now, what happens if at the end of the day tomorrow, 5 p.m. New York time, when my my candle here closes. What happens if this ends up being a really strong bullish candle like this one or this one? Well, then what we'll have on the chart is we'll have a really strong bend. And this, see how this blue line here on the line chart is just like this? It'll be like all the way up like that. And then it'll be, yeah, okay, cool. I'll put a buy order above the high or whatever. You know, that's fine. I'm happy to do that kind of trade. But not, not based on this. So, so this trade actually falls apart on number four. It doesn't give me a nice naked trade. Um, some people are going to look at this and call it a kangaroo tail, but I, it's way too small for me. Um, those are trap trades to me, and I've, I've taken too many of them to know. You know, it's not a good idea to try and, um, 
you know, keep your, uh, you know, your, your stop really tight. The reason why traders like these little tiny candles is because they're stopped so tight. But the reason why they, they don't work it as well is because, well, their stop's really tight. So I don't like that one. So now what I want to do is I want to shift over and I want to talk about the Euro Pound because the Euro Pound's doing something really interesting um, compared to what we normally see here. This is what we normally see. We see a strong trend. We wait for the pullback or the retracement. We wait for 70% of the retail um, traders who are losing you know, we know they're losing. They're going to go against the trend. They're going to say, oh, the trend's over. Yeah, I'm going to get in on it. This is going to be a great move. And then um, we get the candle formation and we go in there. So what's interesting is that this doesn't apply to the Euro Aussie. So the Euro Aussie has one bit of, I'm just going to quickly show you. The Euro Aussie is almost on 70%, right? But guess what? It doesn't have all that other stuff. All those, it's not in a strong trend. It doesn't give us any candle confirmation. It's got nothing. Here's the Euro Aussie. It's in a complete mess. So while it would be nice to be able to go long Euro Aussie, it's, it's, in a, it's not trending. It was trending over here in April and May, but since then it's, it's been quite choppy actually. So this is not, this is an example of a market that it was at 70%, I think earlier today and yesterday. Um, or 69.8 or whatever is right on there. And um, and it, it just doesn't have the other pieces here. So that's that's a case of, you know, if I took a trade here, I'd be trying to squeeze something out of it. And that's to me, that's not worth it. It needs to be trending. All right, so let's go over to the Euro Pound because this one's fascinating. This is quite rare, actually, that you're going to see this. But if you go to the Euro Pound... I want to see what it is here. So they're calling it most traders 60. So Oanda's calling it 63% of the traders are shorting. And yet, um, we don't have Euro Pound on IG. But yet Euro Pound here, they're saying that 74.5% of the traders are shorting it. Okay. This is a great example of the trend is over, right? It's done. That's it. Game over. It's not happening anymore. I mean, this and this is quite rare. It's it's almost always the opposite. When you have a strong downtrend like that, usually it's flipped and you got 75% of the traders are going long and 25% are going short. So this is fascinating. So what what I'll show so again, look at this. Most traders are shorting it right here. So what I would expect to see over the next day or two uh, on the Euro pound is some sort of exhaustion candle, like a really nice long-tailed kangaroo tail that goes down here below this area here, like into this area here, that would be great. If we got something that was into this area, a nice long wicked candle, that would be a great opportunity to go long. Let's just back up, back this up a bit and see. Yeah, this is a great spot. Look at this resistance, resistance, support, support, support. It's a great spot for trade, you know, looking at support and resistance. But more importantly, this is just like amazing that everyone's shorting it right here. They're expecting it to break this level and it's not going to do it. It's gonna. Ha it could have a false breakout, but it's not gonna do it. So this is sort of the opposite of what the, what you normally see. This is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you. This is very, very rare that you see all these people piling in on a trend like this. So basically, it's over, right? It's over. We're gonna get some sort of news or reversal. I don't care what the news is. I don't pay attention. Really, it's not not that important. Um, the chart tells me everything I need to know. And looking at the sentiment, I would expect that, that we're going to see some sort of kangaroo tail, some sort of wicky long wick candle here. And then boom, that's a great opportunity to go long. And I would probably look to possibly move to break even if it can get above 88.90. And then there's another spot here on 89.70. And there's another one up here on 90.40 and 91 and 92 so all those potential profit targets for that one so this one's really really cool uh and you don't like i said you don't see this very often so this is an example of a trending market 
it's had a bit of a consolidation period and then now everyone's on board there must be some news or some everyone's expecting something and so what's happening now is um we're going to get a fake a fake break of like some sort of false breakout here which actually if you look at the um the euro let me share with you the euro so i had the euro in this box here and um you know, it wouldn't surprise me if the market hopped back up into this box, given what we know about the euro pound, that the fact that the euro pound, everyone's selling euro pounds. So, you know, probably the euro is going to get a little bit stronger and the pound's going to get a little bit weaker, which is interesting. So are there any, any questions about that? Do you see why I am saying that I think that trend is over? Most of the time, you won't have that decision to make. Most of the time, if you're using these data, what you will decide is, oh, this is just a retracement. The trend's going to re-engage. Rarely will you see the numbers line up like that where you say, oh, this trend's not going anymore. <laughs> you know, this trend's over. That's very, very rare. It's usually the opposite where at the retracement phase, everyone thinks the trend's over when it's, it's not. Um, which is what you'll see if you go back and look at um, some of the euro charts from uh, you know July and August. You know a lot of a lot of a lot of these. If you go, actually, I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Have a look. Um, if you go to, it's uh, let's see here. We'll go to historical, yeah, there it is. Historical open position. So um, this is another way to do it. And you can download these data from Wanda, which is another cool thing to do. Uh, here, So here's how to read this. Let me go um, just one thing, okay? So the blue mountain here is telling you what percentage of traders are going long okay so you can see that oh, okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i'm gonna switch it the other way well it doesn't matter it doesn't matter okay so what, what we really want to pay attention to is when does the um, percentage of traders um, going long dip below uh, 30%. So you can see here, back here, September 29th, 2016, price was at 86.19, which is the black line, and 22% of the traders were going long. What happened after that? It went straight up. It's going up. And all along during this trend, you're still seeing um, fewer than 30% of the traders are going along. That tells you the trend is keep going to keep going. What happens up here? It's 28%, 29%, and then look, it starts to fall, right? 26%, 22 There's another peak here. Okay, boom, 31%. So this double topped. So during the retracement here, it still wasn't didn't have enough to fall, but then when it double topped, it, was, it broke 30, and then it's over, okay? We'll go again here, and at this point, we're at 33, because so that doesn't break our, our, here we go, 34, 33, 30, okay, here. Okay, so, um, 30% of the traders are going long, 28% of the traders are going long, and it's shorting. It's, it's falling. So this is not, okay, and then it goes back to 30. So this is a very brief one here before so this one is an example of where it wouldn't have worked out but remember you weren't in a um uh, uh an uptrend anyway really it kind of got to at the end of the uptrend people were getting a little bit crazy okay we'll go down here let's see where's this one 26 so here's another example it's broken through 30 and what does it do it flat lines and then it goes up it's still up pulls back when over 30 goes back under 30 flat lines goes up and see it's going up all of this uptrend here 
is between 25, 24, and 28. See? And then finally it falls again, and the trend is over once you get down here. You can see. So what, what we're seeing here is that the retail traders are telling us if there's fuel in the trend. And you can go back and you can look at this for any, um, like the euro was a great example recently over the last uh, month. You can see, uh, well, probably I'll go over the last year. Um, all during this trend, look at this. It's all low, low, low percentage of traders who are going along and it just keeps going up and up and up. So it's a great example of that. I don't see it above 70 up here. It's mostly just, yeah. They don't, they don't allow you to go short. They only allow you to go long versus short or just long. So you have to just do the math, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, are there any questions about how you might use sentiment? I've put the rules up here for you. I'll give you the quick and dirty again. Uh, was it on my, yeah. You're just gonna identify a trend. Again, if you need a consultant for that, that that's fine. It's easy, it's easy, it takes the thinking out of it. You wait for the pullback and then you decide, is that is that a pullback or is that the end of the trend? And in most cases, um, you'll see the retail traders telling you, nope, that's just a pullback. And then once I get a candle confirmation, I go ahead and go long or short or whatever the, you know, whatever the trend is. That's basically it. it's pretty simple stuff. And so if we look at the data now, uh, really the only ones that would be in that would be interesting would possibly be the euro yen and the euro pound, the euro Aussie potentially also. Um, uh, I'll go back. Euro Aussie here is also close. Still hasn't updated. It's still the same number. That's close as well, but it but there isn't. Oh, there we go. It did update. Um, it's not quite there yet though with the Euro Aussie. So I'd be looking at Euro Pound and Euro Yen trades. Cool, awesome, great. Any charts that you would like to see now? I will give you a quick recap of what I'm looking at, and you can type your charts in the chat box, and we can go over those. Number one. I think that when the USD CAD, when the Looney Looney gets up to about 1.2450, if it prints a bearish candle, I will short it there. The reason why, support, support. This is the first, this is what we call a first touch trade. First touch trade. It's the first time the markets come back to see a support and resistance level from the other side. So it was support, support, support forever, and now it's gonna be resistance. Now, it needs to give me a bearish candle. Um, if it prints this little neutral looking bearish candle, that doesn't count. It needs to be a, a nice, big, fat red candle like this one right here. That's what I'm looking for. Again, if you have any charts, any, um, you know, you wanna see the pound yen or whatever, type it in the chat box and we'll, I'm happy to look at it. But I just wanna show you the charts that are interesting to me right now. Certainly the, the CAD is one that's on my radar. If it gets there, I'll get an alert and I'll know and I'll be watching for a, a big fat bearish daily candle. Euro yen for the reasons we talked about before, which is the fact that so many traders are shorting it right now. The retail traders are telling me that this is probably gonna at least double top up at 34 and possibly even take that out and go higher. Euro pound also, as we talked about again, um, what I'm expecting to happen here is that we'll see some sort of long-tailed kangaroo tail or just a long-tailed wick um, that that's it, you know, that's it. It's game over and we're gonna bounce from here and go higher, which is fascinating because, you know, you know, this looks like a bearish formation, but uh, something's gonna happen. And then um, Cad Yen is the one I'm actually in right now. See how it's doing, where is the Cad Yen? There it is. Oh, cool, it's gone in profit. So yeah, so Cad Yen, I bought at 91.05. Stop loss is at 90. Um, I'm targeting 93, 94, 20, and then the trailing exit. So three, th it's like a split position is the, the way I deal with that. It's equal. So one's gonna go for 195 pips. Another one's gonna go for 195 pips plus 120 pips, whatever that is. 
<laughs> 295, 315 pips, and the other one goes for who knows what. And that'll be a three bar exit, which is in the Naked Forks book. The three bar exit's in there. Um, what else? E -d 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 -d. Oh, it was interesting to me that the Swissy was one of those pairs that yesterday or the day i think yesterday it was hovering around 69 percent. i thought that was interesting that so many people are going long uh it may be time to short usd swissy i don't really see it on the chart like i don't really you know what i mean um there there isn't really a uh there isn't really a downtrend it's kind of like the euro pound uh where it's you know um you know Everyone's going long Swissy, so maybe the trend is over sort of thing. You know what I mean? Everyone's going long USD Swissy, so maybe this is over. But again, it's not at the 70% level. I just think it's interesting that it's doing a similar thing to the euro pound where everyone's thinking, oh, yeah, it's, it's trending higher. Well, I don't think so. I think it's maybe it has another touch of the 9770 area left, but it also might just that might, might have been it. <laughs> And that's it's going to turn around from here. So we'll see. Um, and that's probably it for me. Euro pound, euro yen, Swissy, CAD, CAD yen. Uh, the pound is or the pound is interesting because of what it's done here. It's in this bullish channel. I would be, I would be somewhat tempted. Um, if we were to snap back up here on this four hour candle and close clearly above my little channel line, which I have at 3426, I would be very tempted to go long. <laughs> if this ended up, I think this candle is going to close in about two hours and 15 minutes. But if this one were to, and I might not, I may not be awake then, probably most likely will not. But this could give us some sort, it could even give us like some sort of a, um, daily kangaroo tail this would be a daily trendy kangaroo tail if it snapped back higher uh, i don't know if you're familiar with those from the naked forks book but it's basically a kangaroo tail um after consolidation like this so it consolidates and then it makes the lowest low here in a bullish trend with that that could be interesting and given what we know about the euro pound um it's quite interesting but we'll see we'll see because you know what we would what we would think would happen if the euro pound in fact goes higher, um, we would think that the euro would go up and the pound would go down. But we'll see. We'll see what happens here. So that's another potential trade right there. And that's probably about it for me. I'm probably not going to be jumping at anything else. I wanted to take the yen today, but it went without. It went without me. So I was going to go long, as you can see here. Um, this is, I was going to take the CAD yen and the yen today. Um, I was going to buy at 112.55 or 8 pips above the Asian high, but um, it's already kind of taken off without me. So I was going to target 113.90. It's, it kind of took off a little bit earlier than I had hoped. So I missed that sucker, but that's all right. You don't, I don't, I don't get upset about that stuff. So we'll see. So that's all I've got for you guys. Any questions about any of this? Or are we all clear? All good? Cool. It's always good, I find, to get away from the charts for a while. Like, um, cool. Thanks, Albert. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Greg. Adam. Cool. You know, like, what I've noticed, I, I went on a holiday and didn't, I looked at the charts once during that time. And what I like about that is, you, you know, when you're watching the charts every day, you kind of get these theories in your head, like it could do this or it could do that. But when you, when you don't see them at all, and then you come and you're like, wow, like, you know, it's, it's almost like a, um, you're more open to possibilities when you're not watching the charts. I guess that's the best way to say it. Like, I feel like I'm at my best when I don't look at the charts that often. The, the, the fewer looks I give the chart, the more likely I am to see it for what it is. And I don't know if that's if that makes sense, but I don't know if you guys have experienced that. I find that sometimes 
you know, you get locked in conf- into confirmation bias, which is basically what it is, where you see things that just confirm your view and anything else that doesn't confirm your view just kind of throws out, you know, you throw out the window. But with this, um, you know, being away from the charts, which is why I think taking a break is great. You see it so clearly, it's great. So, um, yeah, this is an interesting chart, the EuroCAD. I probably wouldn't be doing anything other than, you know, buying if it came down here, but I don't know. And that, that's kind of an interesting spot down here because you've got resistance here, support, support. Boy, if it were to get down here, that would be a tempting area for a buy. But, yeah. All right, folks. I hope to see you. If you're a member, I hope to see you in the forum. Uh, we've got the cryptocurrency webinar on this week as well. Hope you can make it. I wish you very happy trading. Take care, guys. We will see you next time. Have a great week. See ya. Happy trading, everyone. See ya. Bye.